I am a financial journalist. And for 18 years, I went to work every day to find people who'd done something stupid, something bad, or better yet, something illegal, and write about them. And after 18 years of doing this every day, I found myself in a very sad and dark place. Because 18 years of criticism and control had done something to me. I was lonely, I was scared, I had shamed and blamed so many people that I became afraid myself of being blamed and shamed, and I didn't dare to move. And I thought, can I find my way out of this? What's on the other side of blaming and shaming and criticism? And I started a journey, an expedition, a hard one, a lonely one, but I found what's on the other side of criticism. And what I found was compassion, creativity, passion, kindness, and generosity. And I really hope that you'll join me on this journey. And I've come to the conclusion that generosity is the new efficiency. And it all starts in our brains. And our brains is a marvelous place. It's a chemistry lab where things are going on all the time. All these chemicals bursting out and uh, neurotransmitters and whatnot. And right now, your brains are being hacked by me. It depends on who you listen to, what we talk about, how we talk to each other. It depends on what we eat. And this is probably a good place to leave if you don't want a, criti a critical finance journalist to hack your brain. But the problem is that out there, there will be other things hacking your brain. So better yet stay. Well, these neurotransmitters, some of them we love, some of them we, we, we really want them, we need all of them, but some of them, especially one I'm going to talk about, it's called oxytocin. And oxytocin, that's the good stuff, I promise you. Oxytocin gives us this deep feeling of love and belonging and a deep sense of being together and being at the right place. And we can actually do things to raise our own oxytocin. We can give someone a hug. We can pet an animal. Or we can, the best way of raising oxytocin is to breastfeed a child, which is obviously not available to us all the time. So I I'm experiencing and, and, and trying to raise my oxytocin while driving my car. And what I do, I used to drive like a mad woman, like a finance journalist with little time. I'm very efficient. Not anymore. Now I'm like, I'm leaning back and I'm waving to my fellow citizens. I'm smiling. Now I look like a mad woman. But, <laughs> But I'm a happy mad woman. And on very good days, I mean really good days, I might even give away a parking lot <laughs> to someone. And it makes me so happy. I'm so touched by my own generosity. <laughs> and you might think that, oh, that's so sad. She's a sad person if that can touch her. But the thing is that it's my brain rewarding me for being generous. That's, that's it. So now I look more like this when I drive. <laughs> and we know another thing, the smile. The smile, it helps. And I'm sorry, this is irritating stuff for all of you being on smiling courses and fed up with smiles. But I'm sorry, guys, it works. We know it works. <laughs> and the way we know it works is that some 
three crazy scientists from France, of course, they put a pen in the mouth. This is, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be real, it could be fake smiles. It's just the muscles in the, in the face. So if you know, if you have a pen and think this is a boring speak, speech, just put a pen in your mouth. It works. So what I do now when I'm in when I'm in a queue waiting for my cable company to pick up after 10 minutes and I'm really stressed out, I think, oh, aha, I remember the pen, I put it in, and after two minutes I might even hum along with the electronic music in my phone. <laughs> do it. Use your pen. Not to criticize people, but to just shovel it in, into your mouth. We know also meditation of any kind. It helps us when we're stressed out, not while driving cars. That's, that's obvious. But if we're stressed out, two minutes, close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there. We do have a friend, and that friend is meditation. This is now common knowledge. And that's why Dalai Lama and those guys, they're invited to neuroscience conferences all over the world to talk about meditation. And not only that, our world leaders in Davos, in uh, World Economic Forum, they talk about this. They talk about the huge shift from IQ to EQ, from the feeling of excessive uh, efficiency, I am a finance journalist, to we are in this together. And we're so, we're so, we can do whatever we want together. That's the movement from IQ to EQ, from making products to telling stories. And last year, our, our, our leaders at Davos, they were talking about things like this, healing through music. And my favorite, the unexpected benefits of being wrong. Okay, 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 but how can we, each one of us, be more generous? Now I have to introduce my brother-in-law. He is, I know you're watching, <laughs> out there somewhere. He's a great guy. He's a teacher. Uh, he's uh, obviously married to my sister, and he treats her like a queen. And he has a wonderful life philosophy. What he says is, one has to keep one's pigsty relatively clean. What that means, that's responsibility. It means, I have a pigsty. Responsibility. And it's generosity. I have to keep it relatively clean. Not totally clean, relatively clean. I'm human, you know, I make mistakes but I'll keep it relatively clean. So, inspired by this great man, I have started to <laughs> clean up my own pigsty. And ladies and gentlemen, I warn you, it's not going to be pretty, and I'm not looking forward to this, but here we go. I'm envious. I'm an envious person. I envy people. I envy glamorous people I read about in the magazines. I envy other journalists who get prizes, or I envy mm, mothers with uh, husbands and jobs and, and everything. I envy very slim, pretty ladies eating chips and uh, <laughs> Cinnabons, and the worst, uh, party smokers. Party smokers who can have a cigarette at parties and just being fine with it. I want to stab them. I want to, I, I really envy them, and that's not good. I know. And what 
happens when I envy them. My whole pigsty follows. I'm judging. I'm scared. I'm arrogant, maybe. I want to show those chips eating, uh, cinnamon eating ladies something that I'm probably smarter than them or something. Very stupid. Well, but the thing is that it doesn't really matter because I can hear some of you laugh, and maybe that means that I'm not totally alone in this. And maybe you've met like envious people before. And the thing about Envy is that it's so closely connected to admiration. I envy the people I admire. So now in my brain, because there's things happening all the time up there, I just translate my envy to admiration. And the thing is that we all make mistakes, and we, if we all keep our pigsties clean, then we don't have time to judge others' pigsties. So just let's... I call it the pigsties road to generosity. <laughs> and there's this, it, this is a very vulnerable moment to talk about. I, I haven't been looking forward to this. I have, but not totally. And there's one woman, Brene Brown, the wonderful Brene Brown, you might know her. She has two of the most seen globally TED Talks ever. She's the queen of vulnerability. And vulnerability is our way to generosity as well. Because we're all in this together. And it's companies with pigsties, people with pigsties, everyone with a pigsty. Let's just exchange pigsties and see how we can help each other. And while working on my pigsty story, this one single word came flying over the Atlantic from the States and into my computer in Oslo, and that word is flossom. I'm flossom! You know, I could... I, that word saves me when I do stupid things, and I do it all the time, believe me. I'm still very critical, and it's my, in my DNA to be judging. And, and I, I mean, I work on this every day, but I'm just flossom. And so are you, and so are all of us. We make mistakes. And when we know this, when we acknowledge it and use it, we can really start to work and forgive each other, forgive ourselves. And then we find our true self-worth. We don't have to be perfect. We are not. And then we can start to trust again. Ourselves, each other. Then we find the true courage to be flossom and to be transparent, open, vulnerable. And I'll wrap it up by an attempt to raise your level of oxytocin. This is my dog. She's adorable. And uh, she raises my level of, of oxytocin every single day. And I want to, to finish off by bursting into a Norwegian wedding song just to celebrate this flossom, wonderful, generous world that we can create together. Thank you. Da di da di da da di da up. Da di da da di da di da da di da di da da di da da di da da di da di da 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 di da da di da di Very vulnerable. Da di da da di di do die. Da di da da di di da di da di da da. Da di da di da di da di da. So, thank you. Thank you.